up you guys welcome to another episode of the metro drive and this is episode four i believe we're gonna geek out today guys um you know a lot of times i talk about uh you get like a little bit more laid back uh kind of coach uh coach david version but today we're gonna talk about something that i believe a lot and i keep in my mind uh both with dealing with people uh, I kept this in mind a lot when dealing with youth, uh, as, uh, when I helped with uh, youth on the west side of Detroit, and, uh, and now I, I definitely use this uh, when teaching and dealing with families at, uh, at Metro Jiu Jitsu. And I'm uh, talking about self-fulfilling prophecies. What do I mean by that? Uh, it's some, one of those things you hear a lot, you might hear it in movies, you might hear whatever, and you're like, what, what is a self-fulfilling prophecy? And it got coined by a man named Robert Merton back in, uh, I want to say, well, he was he was born like the early 1900s, poverty, I think, in Philly, and he came on to be like a Harvard sociologist, and the definition of a self-fulfilling prophecy is a false definition of a situation evoking a new behavior which makes the original false definition become true. And I might tweak that a little bit. Uh, not that I'm better than Robert Merton, but I might tweak that and say an unproven definition of the situation or an unvalidated situation yet. It's not necessarily false because if, uh, you know, let's say, uh, I'm going to go over a few examples, but let's say, man, I'm, I, I've got a view of myself. I'm just worthless. I'm no good. I'm dirt. Well, that's definitely a, that's definitely a false, uh, you know, that's definitely a false statement of a, for all humans. Uh, no human is worthless. Uh, but if I'm going to say, man, I'm going to flunk this test, that's unproven yet. We have, we have yet to see. I mean, if you didn't study, you know, if you go in or I'm going to flunk this class, that's unproven yet. We have to see what happens. And so this plays out, guys, this plays out in a lot of different areas of our life. Uh, the first of which is, I mean, you, uh, uh, my wife's a nurse, and what fascinates me the most is... Uh, is the it's known as the placebo effect now. So the placebo effect, for those who don't know, is let's say I've got an illness, right? And I'm like, doc, please, please, doc, just give me the drugs. I'll feel better. And the doc says, no, no, I, I you know, whatever, or I don't want to give you the drugs, or I don't want you to get, a, a, you know, hooked on anything. Please, please, I'll just feel better. Okay, fine. They hand him a sugar pill. A sugar pill is exactly as it sounds. It's no actual medicine. Uh, but the patient thinks they've just received treatment. And they think they just received treatment and they, and they actually recover or it actually helps the illness. That's a placebo. And plus the, the effects of placebo pretty much state the power of belief in something. The power of belief that this, whatever they're giving, whatever treatment, the power of belief will help you get better. And so there's, I mean, there's an entirely, um, when Amanda was going through nursing school, there's a whole, like, category about, it's, uh, the term is psychosomatic, the, that the effect your mind has on your body. And that's uh, just the uh, one example is there's a direct and immediate correlation when somebody gives up. When they're in, when they're in treatment, they're in the hospital, and they give up, they're like, I'm done and their health, it's almost an immediate decline. You know, when they mentally give up, then their body's going to feel it. Uh, conversely, if you mentally feel great, your body's going to feel that as well. Um, and let's, I'm going to bring this back to something that applies to you because it touches on all areas of life. So that's one in the medical field. That's one, um, a placebo. There is a converse to that though which I do want to talk about, and it's a nocebo. It's the exact opposite. So you think something is, uh, you think something is gonna hurt you, and it does. Uh, one of the most obvious cases is uh, they had cases where people were told they were allergic to poison ivy. They were told that. They were not actually allergic to poison ivy. And so when they brushed them with it, or when they shot them with it, the person who was not allergic to poison ivy broke out in hives due to a nocebo effect. A nocebo, again, so the nocebo effect is just the opposite. They believe they're allergic and so that it's psychosomatic. Their mind has an effect on their body. And it's like, well, you know, 
Maybe that doesn't make any sense. That's the power of belief. Where does this play in? Okay. Uh, it's also got a, uh, I'm going to funnel it back to a sociological, um, or how it plays in society. Uh, two guys, Jacobson and Rosenthal, in the 1960s, did a case study uh, uh, in an elementary school. And they made a list of, they, they broke up this made up list and gave it to the teachers and said, here, here's a list of all of the, we had a Harvard test and here's a list of the students in your class that are growth spurters. They're going to be rock stars in your class. You know, they're going to do, um, they're going to be rock stars in your class and they're just going to rock it out. They're going to grow. You're, you'll see they're going to grow quicker than the rest of your class. They're going to learn quicker. They, they had nothing to prove that. It was a made up list and it was a case study to test this. And so sure enough, the teachers treated those growth spurters differently based on their preconceived notion of something that wasn't validated and wasn't true. You see where I'm going with this? So if I believe, if I believe in myself, something's gonna help me, if I believe in that, there is actual clinical studies to support that it will, even if there's no scientific backup for that. If I believe that somebody is going to do better in my class and I treat them accordingly, they will do better. The converse is also true. If I believe somebody, I, guys, you know how many times as uh, when I was helping youth or when I was helping, this one of them, David's actually watching right now. Dave, David, I'm gonna call you out. David Abuasili was like the black sheep in my youth group. Like he was always, like everyone just, he was labeled as a troublemaker. I didn't believe it. One, because I really liked the kid. But I didn't, everyone wanted to, uh, he was the troublemaker. Oh, let's blame David. Oh, let's get him the scapegoat. I didn't believe that. And so I took to him and I said, you know what, you're just like everyone else. And I'm going to expect more of you. And so pretty much what uh, Jacobson, the report from their case study is, when we expect certain behaviors of others, we are likely to act in a way that makes that expected behavior more likely to come true. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what's the takeaway of this? All right, obviously I'm a, uh, you know, I teach, I've taught youth. A lot of our other st uh, staff and coaches have a lot of experience with youth and young adults. And as a Metro, as a jujitsu teacher, you can't, like I, I get parents saying, oh, he's this, oh, he's slow. Oh, Jen, you know, he's got, I, I listen to what they're telling me, but it doesn't affect the way I treat any students. And they, guys, this, this takes into, uh, you can get into, uh, again, in society, this can apply to different people's ethnic backgrounds, how people's preconceived, unvalidated notions, how they treat them, uh, whether it's race, race or ethnicity, but every, how you address somebody with a preconceived notion is very, very important and very dangerous, all right? So if like if you, if somebody tells you something, hey, this kid's got a learning problem, he's gonna be a problem for you, you can't let that, you, can, you need to dismiss that and treat them like, like they're gonna be a rock star. Every one of your students needs to be a rock star. Every person in your circle needs to be a rock star. If someone's coming to work, from, work for you and someone tells you, hey, yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, and you let that get inside your head, you're gonna treat him like he doesn't know what he's doing. And in turn, you're gonna make him doubt it. I remember uh, uh, one case in specifically, my dad, like, my, uh, my dad was just going on about it. Like, I was like 16, and he hooked me up to this real heavy trailer of hauling, I don't know, some metal stuff. And I was like 16, 17, and he's like, Dave can't drive that, Paul, you gotta drive that. Dave can't drive that, Dave can't drive that. In my head, like, I started the day off thinking, like, I've been driving trailers for years, like around the house, I can drive this down the freaking freeway. And uh, and so long story short, all of his negative expectations of me kind of got into me. I was like, well, maybe he's right. There's a big load. I can't handle it, whatever. So you need how you, what your expectations are both with yourself and with others is it, there is scientific evidence to back that up. If I believe I can do something, if I believe, like I, if I go into, and I, guys, I, 
I, this applies into tournaments, this applies into business, this applies into work. If you think you're gonna kill it in a tournament, if you think you're gonna kill it at your job interview, if you think you're gonna kill it on your, on your test or, uh, or exam or whatever at school, that is going to, you, that your actions will dictate that. Okay, if I think I'm at, like I'm training for, uh, if I'm training for Worlds or Chicago or something, and I know like, hey, I'm gonna take gold here. I'm gonna take gold here. You're gonna train accordingly for that. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it can't be, it can't be um, understated. I think this is one of those things we like it in our heads. We've all, we've all had somebody, we've all met somebody who's like, yeah, oh yeah, I know. Case in, <laughs> case in point, whatever. Like it, there's so much, uh, uh, so much going around about different celebrities, but everyone's got their opinions about whoever. And if they say, yeah, that guy's a jerk. Well, if you're not vigilant and if you just, if you just go based off their report, you're going to treat that guy like a jerk. Okay. Until you really get to know him and you're like, man, you know, he's not so bad. That's the importance of, yeah, thanks Anthony. My, my beard looks really good. I appreciate that. I'm trying to get, throw me off guard. That's the importance of, uh, that's the importance of being vigilant and use the positive aspects of a self-fulfilling prophecy, both with yourself and have, have confidence and faith in what you're going to do and in how you interact with others. Okay. Cause if you think negatively of somebody, I don't care what their background is. Okay. I don't care what the background is. Um, it, I mean, from the outside looking in, I have no college degree. Someone could easily say, yeah, he's got no college degree. That guy's a moron. You could, absolutely. I think you'd be. <laughs> I think you'd be wrong, but uh, but you know you can't let that uh, you can't uh, let that affect you. Uh, someone could also whatever it is. So that's the takeaway. Use the self fulfilling the benefits of the self fulfilling prophecy to your advantage. Use the benefits of the self fulfilling prophecy to help other people and change their outcome. The more, guys, the more that you're cognitive of this, the more that you're conscious of it, you're going to see it around everywhere. You're going to see it around in news articles. You're going to see it around in, in uh, people you interact with at work. Uh, I mean, so many times you answer the phone, oh, that customer's a headache. Is it possible that customer's a headache because you think they're a headache and you're mistreating them and so they're going to push back due to your mistreatment? See where I'm going with this? It applies everywhere, and I, I could talk about this for a long time. Uh, guys, leave leave some comments below. I want to hear examples of if you've been the victim of a negative uh, label or self fulfilling prophecy, or if you know someone who's like a uh, who's a positive kind of a, a comeback story of self fulfilling prophecy and how this person really believed in me and treated me differently. So. Till that time, guys, I will be at Metro Jiu-Jitsu. That's in Southgate on Eureka, next to Planet Fitness. Kids class starts at 5, doors open at 4.30. Adult class is at 6.30. If you want to see a live working of some positive self-fulfilling prophecies, come on by. You can try us out for a free class. See you on the mats.